Hi, I'm Jeff Foxworthy, and welcome to Gamekeeper Podcast. If you want to learn more about farming for wildlife and habitat management, then you are in the right place. Join the Gamekeeper crew direct from Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Studio as they discuss the latest wildlife and habitat management practices, news, and of course, hunting. There's no telling what you'll learn, but I'm going to tell you, I bet it's interesting. Enjoy. We're live in three. Two, one. All right, everybody. Well, welcome back to the Mossy Oak Land Enhancement Building to the Gamekeeper Podcast here in the Gamekeeper Studio. Lanny sitting across from me. It's been a minute. It feels yeah. like we've been a minute since well, we've we been here. Well, we missed last week. Yeah. Sure did. It feels odd to miss it. Such a shame. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We got Dudley over here to my left. Hey, y'all. I didn't say, hey, guys. Hey, y'all. Hey, y'all. Man. Yeah, it's a little. That's Come a little, on, y'all. Just trying something new. Yeah, look at him. Warden Dudley. Yeah, well, Junior Warden Dudley. Have you heard about this, Lanny? I've no, I hadn't. <laughs> well, I was nominated to be the Junior Warden at the the church I attend in Starkville. All right. Yeah. That's so, a, what what are your honor. responsibilities as Junior Warden? Um, basically, all of the facilities. Oh man, uh, the yard, the bushes, the weeds, the pipes. The air conditioning, all of that. That's pretty serious. Yeah. Good for Dudley. That is and, good. And you know how good I am at all of that anyway. Well, I mean, I know you're, I, you're I the even, best I know at plants. I don't so, even, I mean, I don't even know my yard. That, I so, know, but that's that's what I, that's kind of yard I like. It'll be you interesting. Know what I mean? And he knows weeds. Yeah. So. Yeah. So also, I have no doubt he'll do an excellent job. He will. He will. So also, we have somebody new sitting in here with us today, Jason McKellar. New to the podcast. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, Behind so, the glass wall. So Mac lasted one episode, and then he went on vacation. Where is Mac? S- what, wherever he vacations. He's in Steamboat. Oh, hitting the slopes. Hitting the slopes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So I've been answering his calls all day to returning his or yeah, he call. He so. forwarded me some emails, but I, I wonder why you were in such a, a good mood, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad to have Jason sitting over there. I like Jason a lot. And Jason... Uh, you know, he's, he's, he's really into this hunting stuff. It's been yeah. fun watching him. And he asked a question the other day that I thought was worthy of us discussing. I agree. And that was about what, well, Jason, why don't you ask it? So, <clears throat> sound all right. Yeah. Oh, perfect. All right. So, uh, took my kid hunting and he shot a doe and ran off. We couldn't find it. So we got to talk about cutting shirt tails and the tradition, of course, if you miss one, Get your shirt tail cut off, but what happens if you hit it and it runs off and you never find it? You cut your shirt tail. Well, that's a good question. That's a good question. Because most of the time, you think about the miss. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we all want to find them, but sometimes that happens. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of thinking, you know, don't rub it in. You know, don't don't make somebody cut their shirt tail off. You know, it just depends on who it is and what the situation is. Right. You know, if for me as a, I am very, very conscious about, with my child, about being sure, not that he loves it, but that he doesn't hate it. Right. Is the best way I can put it. Because I'm so overboard. You know, and I am. So, <laughs> even with the, you know, the the blood on the face and everything else, the way I grew up, you know, I, which I always imagine, you it's know. It's a rite of passage. It's a rite of passage. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you don't want to ruin it for your kid. Sure, you know what right. I mean? And I'm, so I, I probably, unlike what I would have thought I would have been, I am less forceful about it than not, you know, because, you know. I just I just want them to have a good time and enjoy it. Right, is the so, best way to so put you, it. You, now you that's with a child. Now if you're going, I'm gonna give you hell. Yeah, and it's yeah. just the way it is. You so, know what I mean? So, so it just kind of depends the level. You didn't dunk Hayden's head. I in did the not gut dunk him in the gut bucket. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know? that's a good thing. So you well, know, and you know, so, well, but I grew up either way where we grew up. You know, I was a little bit older than Hayden. I mean, you know, you know, sticking a six year old head in some guts is. You know, you know, I was older. You know, <laughs> been around hunting camp and stuff like that. Episode. So, how do you think? What would your son react if you if you trimmed his shirt tail? How would he react to that? It certainly wouldn't make him not like hunting, would it? No, I, I think he would like it. But I, I mean, I wouldn't have done it right then. Yeah. But or not that day. We need a ceremony of some sort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I guess it could work both ways. You're trying to make light of the situation and saying, yeah. you know, unfortunately, this does happen. Yep. It's a reality um, of it. There's no question. So about I, it. maybe you just read the read the person. Yeah, I think it's situational. Yeah. 100%. Mm-hmm. It'll I mean, help cause, I mean yeah, everybody knows I'm going to cut up on you if you, you yeah. know, if you have been all of a miss something. Yeah, yeah. You know? And uh, no, Bobby, you know, would never say anything to anybody <laughs> about their shooting ability. We all know this. So it's a part of it. And maybe I'm over, you know, overboard. with. Well, I do think most kids, I don't think I've ever seen a kid that, after you put a little blood on their face and you explain the ritual of the rite of passage that wasn't proud about that or didn't enjoy that. Right, yeah. I think they all do. Now, that being said, I'm probably going to hook Hayden up when he kills his first buck. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, I would expect you to. Yeah, because he's, he's he's old enough now. You know what I mean? I guess that's the best point. You're going to dunk his head in the gut I'm bucket. not going to still <laughs> dunk his head in the gut bucket, but we're going to talk about There's it. There's some awful story. Wait a minute. I think Jason Cleveland's over there waving his hand. It's probably good to let him know ahead of time. What may happen? Mm. Yeah, so that's you, a good idea. Not, you're just not throwing it on them, right? Right there. Yeah, thank you. That's a good suggestion, Cleveland. The wisdom of the cleave. Yeah, <laughs> that's a killer right there. Well, he's, he's yeah. back, finally, he's producing. You know, he's adding to the podcast. I think I am. I, I, yeah, this is great, Cleveland. That, what? So, with you this past uh, week, yeah, did you put some some meat in the freezer? I did. Oh, I, the deer that I killed, the buck that I killed, and then. Uh, I went hunting with my father-in-law, and we um, public land, and we struck up a deal that we both went. He said if he kills, and I, because I, we had to drag it 500 yards, he killed a six point. He said if he kills, I'll he'll give me half the deer, and if I kill, I'll give him half the deer. So I got half of another deer. Hey, score. Nice. <laughs> I need to learn how to work deals. Yeah, I'm, I'm not that. killing anything. Hey, that's awesome. Y'all went out and just and busted out got, on public land. Too. That one got put into hamburger yeah. or deer burger, however you want to say it. My wife has made deer burger several times last week, and I tell you what, it's better than hamburger. Oh, yeah. Man, 100%. it's so good. Yeah. What percent of fat are you putting in there? Any? Or is it it's all lean? I got. I put beef fat in it. Yeah, what percent? I probably had three pounds of beef fat to probably 15 pounds of deer meat. That's kind of yeah. light. Lanny, what's, that, what's that? But, hey, I tell you, it's still uh, good. Hold on. Divide by pie. That's that pie lean, lean pie. cuisine. Pie you know, all round. You know, uh, pie all round cornbread all square. Yeah, that's what it is. So <laughs> Cleveland is built to drag deer. Yeah. You know, anybody that. The, it, the it, ultimate warrior. Yeah, yeah, he's built to drag deer, that's for well, sure. Well, when we were hunting at you had, you can't, we didn't. You so, can't quarter it out. You got to drag well, the thing out. And my father-in-law had a dolly, but the problem was it was wet, and it was disc up ground, a food plot. Yeah, we were so dragging, dragging up yeah. a hill, and we had about four inches of mud on the tire on the wheels. It was rough. I we, can't, we had to, we had to take about six breaks. <laughs> I can't tell you how many I've drug out. That was my dad's favorite thing. You get the furthest from the truck you can. <laughs> <laughs> get him man you serious He's like, yeah i was like let's go get a four with it no mm. anyways well look uh to go back to mckellar let's 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 wrap this up i want you to get your son to listen to this and tell him we've all been there a bunch we've all had a little hair on the biologic from time to time it's a bad feeling but uh <laughs> you, you get over it and you carry on oh, yeah. and anybody says they don't are lying. <laughs> Not to call him out, but this isn't the first one. So, and I, oh, and oh, I, didn't, I didn't get him on the first one, and it was a miss. So, you know, well, you he knows it's coming. Is he getting too excited? What's the deal? Oh, it's all on me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last year we had old thirty thirty iron sights, and this, uh, it was his grandpa's. Yeah, and, you know. that's tough. This year, I just I didn't take him shooting enough. I don't think so. He said he was a little nervous before he pulled the trigger. So I just he probably jerked. Mm -hmm. I but, think that's a good point because I'm going through that with Hayden too. Although he's had you know limited success in the field, he's you know I I have taken him hunting way more than I've taken him shooting. So uh, we've been trying to make that a practice too. And he's you can see his confidence in the way he carries and himself. You know is getting a lot better too. So. I agree with you there, Jason. 
You know, it's easy for us as parents. You want to run it, run a rush out there and oh, let's get it. Oh, just shoot it, just shoot it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, spend a little time with them in the at the range is always good. Yeah, it sure is. And you know, they say that you know hunter numbers are dropping and were know, were <laughs> yeah, good, really good point. Yeah, but, that, this uh, is the first time in twenty five years we're seeing an increase in license sales. So. More about that later. Well, I tell you what, try to drop a deer at a processor. Sign. They're booked up everywhere. You got to tip them to get it in there. Oh, the DIY processing thing is through the roof. It really is. That is awesome. You're doing. I mean, you did it. I'm doing it. I know Jason's prepped up. Dudley's been doing it longer than any of us, I believe. Mm -hmm. Uh, From Stem's turn. Now, Bobby, I know you don't like to touch them much. You know, (laughs) (laughs) support my local process. That's right. You're a. He's an economic stimulus package. (laughs) I like to drop them off and come back come back later. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my goodness. Well, all right. Well, keep us posted uh, on his situation. I'd I'd love to be able to talk. to give him a shout out on a future podcast. So, uh, oh yeah, we got a couple more weeks. So. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, you do. So, so as far as blood on the biologic, there was quite a few deer killed this week, and one in particular that drew my attention, and that was Mr. Johnny Morris. Ooh, that was a big deer. He killed a big deer. He did. With uh, I saw that. With, with guess Mar- who? With Marjorie. Man, that guy knows what he's yeah, doing. He does. Don't you think? Yeah, he does. That, that was <laughs> that was a big beautiful deer. It was. And I think that was. Well, I know it was. It was a big thrill for Mark. Yeah, and John Paul was with him, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. I think so. Nice. Yep, yep. So, and I need to give a shout out. My my nephew has a son named Hudson who's seven years old, and he killed his first deer this past weekend. It was a doe near Selma, Alabama. And Man, old Selma. He was all excited about it, Hudson. And, That's great. Uh, Hudson, Congrats, Hudson. Hudson Spigner is his name, seven years old. Congrats. Yeah, I'm excited for him. So, uh, and then Wanda Lindsay. Did y'all see that big deer she killed? I saw a picture of uh, they both did. of them together. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure did. Giants. I think hers was a little bigger than his. I swear it's a different critter than it is down here. It's a big critter, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Because after going up there last year, now I'm kind of sitting in the tree stand and seeing some bucks. You're know, like, what is that? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. teacup? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's different. It's different. Yeah, yeah it's different. Yeah. So, uh, any anybody else we need to? I think we need to there? send uh, condolences out to our own Jess Rayleigh. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, oh goodness. Yeah. yeah, the buck he was hunting. Somebody buck, killed him. Somebody it. got him, but it wasn't Jess. It was a big deer too. A giant. It deer. was. It was big enough that he didn't tell any of us about it. <laughs> oh, no, he, I had seen a picture. Oh, I, oh I, so you're it, you're cooler well, than I am. No, okay. it's not cool. I, but hey, Dudley, I am too. I saw it for you. <laughs> Think I he thought had- we were buddies, Jess. Mm. Well, wah, wah, wah. Where is it? Where so is it? I, I, w- I wonder. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be interesting to learn how he got the photo. How because I think it was it? on his. Oh, I don't know. It was it another where, club member that killed it. I don't know. I really don't know. I just saw a picture of it dead in the back of a pickup truck. What do you know? Nothing much. <laughs> I know Jess is depressed. <laughs> That's the only are thing. You, are you still working out on the working on the, the what percentage of the fat was that? Oh no, uh, the ADD so kicked in the way okay. Okay. Not right. seconds after that. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. All right. Well, so look, today's show is. I think it's going to be really interesting. We we've, we've got a couple of guests lined up, and we we're going to talk about calibers, calibers for, for deer and maybe elk, uh, mm-hmm. but but uh, but certainly a concentration on the. On whitetail deer and what are the trends in calibers and what do we like and yeah that always generates a lot of discussion lots you know you you get on Facebook or you know some forum and say you know do you like this over that and there'll be three hundred comments mm-hmm. it, it's amazing it will be and uh, so today's guest we got uh, Rafe Nielsen from Browning. And then uh, Pat Mundy from Nosler. So we'll get to them a little bit later on. And while, before I forget, and I, and I will, this show is sponsored by the Duck Hut. And you've seen them advertised in our magazine, those wood duck, those wood duck boxes, the plastic wood duck this boxes. This thing is so cool. It really is. And it's time to start thinking about that mm-hmm. and putting those out. Mm-hmm. And um, But so you can, you know, you can put these up on your property and you can help wood ducks to have places, cavities to nest in. Yep. And you can certainly raise wood ducks. And, I, I and this thing's been engineered for this, you know. Yeah. Wood ducks like. Cavities are what you call them. And That's right. And they're harder and harder in, for them to find. Harder and harder for them to find. So it's a huge part of it. 
But the cool thing about this one, I mean, he did all the research, did all the studies because you can't just build wood dog boxes out of anything. That's right. There's a temperature range, I believe. In the uh, there's all kinds of you know, variables. You know, I think we used to try to make them out of cypress wood. That was the one thing mm -hmm. you could count on. But uh, he put a lot of thought and engineering into this thing. So it really is. So I, I applaud would, him for that. It's a real innovative wildlife management product, no doubt about it's it. It's so fulfilling to put one of those things up and, mm -hmm. and watch it all go down. Um, and you, not, can, you can put a trail camera on one, too, mm -hmm. now and get, get pictures. That was one of the first videos we did here. Yeah, it sure yeah, was. Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, I've had, you know, I've... They'll hiss at you now. I've had <laughs> seven or eight through the years, and I've had, I've always enjoyed that it's cool. as much as anything. And I've enjoyed sneaking up to them and sticking my phone over right. in there and taking, taking a picture. Taking a picture. Yeah. The duck look. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. So, uh, anyway, it's, it's uh, www.duckcut.co.co. So y'all check that out. It's the, in this, there's a Gamekeeper Edition Duck Cut, and it's duckcut.co. Co. Company. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yeah, co. Yep. Com is commercial. All right. Just, just like <laughs> check us there, Jason. That might be. Yeah, I don't yeah, even know. Yeah, yeah, Jason, make sure that. Yeah, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Ah, yeah, thank, thank you. Thank, yeah, Somebody thanks. give me a trumpet or something, Jason. <laughs> give me where you <laughs> I'm having to call for my sound cues. <laughs> yeah. It could have gotten, you know, very easy for me to have said dot com. But so uh, before we get our guests on, I'd, I'd love for both of you guys to kind of comment what your favorite calibers are. For deer hunting? For deer hunting. For me, you know, I grew up, my dad was a 308 guy, you know, and I grew up, and to me, a 308, 7 millimeter 08, you know, about about the same thing, you know. So that's that's when, that's been always been the go to uh, caliber for for me. I've shot some, you know, I don't know, I had a, got a 7 mag and a short mag and all that good stuff, but, you know, just comfortable. I like a small rifle, even though I'm a big dude, you know, like, and so I like a small compact uh, for the way I hunt. Uh, seven millimeter 08. So, and actually, it's a Browning rifle that I bought for Shannon. And I hunt with it all the time. <laughs> I think I said you got that pink sling on it. <laughs> yeah, it's got a pink sling on it. <laughs> yeah, That's great. That and great. I hunt with it religiously. Yeah. 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 So, well, well that makes sense. That, that's what, those are tried and true calibers. Yeah. Yeah, you my dad was a rifleman, you know, so that's it, it's well, the, had a lot of influence. Uh, 308, you can is it is arguably probably the most accurate caliber. Mm -hmm. Precise or accurate? I don't know, Dudley. If you want to split hairs with me on that one, what's what, the what, difference? What is, uh, there is, is a difference. There is a difference. My forest measurements professor. That was the first thing he went over on on day one. Precise or accurate? Uh, precision versus accuracy. Mm -hmm. So. They're basically a, the same. Like the the grouping, you know, can be both accurate and precise. Mm -hmm. um, accurate can be, I, th I think I'm getting this right. Accurate can be several inches away from the bullseye, but the grouping is it's, still good. Gotcha. Precise, you're on the bullseye and a good group. Gotcha. The consistency of the round. And it, may, know, it may be the other way around, but. We have a fact checker now. Yeah, yeah. Did. and it was always you always <laughs> tried to. <laughs> we're like, talking too fast. We're talking too fast. Yeah, I'm still. So, what caliber do you like, Dudley? Uh, my dad and I grew up with thirty alt six. Just that was the uh, deer round. His thing was yeah. uh, keep it simple and let's uh, and and keep it safe. So he didn't want to buy me a different caliber, and us accidentally get them confused and and. So that's what he around. hunted with. Yeah, and so when. You yeah. know, when I got my first deer rifle, it was a thirty alt six because he didn't have to buy any any different ammo. Uh, we didn't have to worry about in the dark accidentally mm -hmm. putting the wrong round in the wrong chamber, that kind of thing. But I, it's just me. But but some yep. oh the, yeah. So uh, your dad knew you well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was not ADD. Uh -huh. um, but uh, <laughs> I've heard Bra Brad Williamson talk about it, and I agree. There's something about 30 caliber yes. that seems to stop them better. No, for lack of a no better, doubt about it. I agree. Uh, whether you're shooting a 30 30 or a 300 blackout or 308, um, seven I millimeter. Yeah. Um, you're right. And, you know, we, you know, we may talk to, uh, you know, Rafe and, Every, you know, we 
everybody's going to have different opinions. Well, that, I tell that's kind of uh, what I uh, just for Mississippi whitetails now, and I'm I'm with you 100 percent because I I've, I've said that over the years. Like, I mean, it's great to start out with a 243, and I, uh, I hear it, everybody loves a 270. Yeah, nothing beats for, shot placement, but for killing 200 pound whitetails, you need to shoot a 30 caliber. Well, you That's, don't have to. You don't have to. I'm no, just saying. I've killed a pile of deer. I'm not with saying two, you have 223, to. 243, 243. Well, excuse me. I'm just saying, you know. Well, if I had a choice, that's what I would shoot at. Yeah, it, it, I mean, you know. And I tell you what, it's kind if of, that, if there's a giant deer sitting, a giant mature whitetail sitting out there, and there's a two forty three laying there and a three hundred eight sitting there, I'm gonna pick up the three hundred eight. Well, I can understand that, and, and I'm I'm not any different than that, but my choices are a little different. I, I started off with a two seventy and loved it, and then kind of gravitated down to a two forty three and hunted with a two forty three for years, and never lost a deer with a two forty three. And then in the last five years, I've settled on a 25 alt six, and I love it. Uh, David, big Dave shoots 25 alt six and mm-hmm. loves it. So I'm not knocking it. I'm just, you just asked what I love. It's, so. it's all about bullet placement and the bullet. And yep. I agree. You know, but I'm most trying. people aren't as accurate and don't take the, you know, for the 243, take the, the time to get it and dial it in and everything else, as you would, I would think. I don't know. I've always loved rifles, yeah. and I've and I love to shoot them before the season gets mm-hmm. here. And by the time it gets here, I'm just ready to go. Yeah. But I'm I, I think the thirty out six is the atypical whitetail Mississippi round. That's what I think everybody shot when I grew up, and mm-hmm. I thought we were different because we shot three eights. It's also funny you shot with your dad shot. I shot with my dad shot. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, yeah. um, I'm just regurgitating now, everything as, as he as told as, me when I was as, growing up. As far as bullets go. Uh, my dad and I always shot uh, a bullet that's going to increase in size on impact and probably not pass through, mm-hmm. but you get a lot more devastation in there. Um, I've kind of evolved to where I like a, a bonded bullet that's going to pass through, and you're going to get a blood trail. Hmm. Yeah, now. I used to do the high shoulder. You know, I wanted a lot of destruction and just lay the deer down. Now I like to... Double like lung a, it. Mm-hmm. I like to miss the heart because I like to eat the heart, and mm-hmm. I like a blood trail. So, do you shoot in the pocket? I would call the pocket behind the shoulder, or do you shoot them center mass? As far as up and down, I, I, I shoot them in the shoulder. I shoot them center mass, and right behind the shoulder. Yeah, I try to. I try to save the shoulder meat and yeah. save the heart if if I can. Yeah, I'm the same way. That's what I do. <laughs> so, and I I like a. I mean. All, the only bullet I shoot is that nozzle partition, and I've been that way since I started deer hunting. I love it. But rarely, if ever, do you get an exit hole with it. But it's always when you feel the offside shoulder. It's, it's right, right there. there. It's right there. Yeah. It's, be right it's like it expends every bit of energy it can. But it just doesn't have enough. But it just doesn't have to get up to there. You're exactly right. It's that just, is the classic bullet. It's I mean, just right there. I mean, I remember being in – Gun shops when I was young, and you know the nozzle partition section. <laughs> yeah, they're great bullets. They're great mm-hmm. bullets. They really are great bullets. All right, so why don't we take a break, pay some bills, and let's get Rafe on the phone first. This ought to be some interesting discussions. When I first bought this farm a short time ago, every single field was grown up with brush eight and ten feet high. But it went from that to this. And even though I planted Biologic with very little moisture in the ground, I was really amazed at the results. I just sat in this field with my wife as she shot her very first deer. We could not be happier. We made a memory that will last a lifetime. All because of the effectiveness of the best food plot seed on the market. Biologic is better seed, pure and simple. Log on to plantbiologic.com to learn more. It's Rafe. Hey, Rafe, this is Bobby Cole. How you doing? Good. How are you doing? <laughs> We're doing good. I got, I got a bunch of folks around here. We got Lanny sitting hey, here. Hey, Rafe. Hey. We got Dudley sitting next to me on the other side. Hey, Rafe. We got two guys named Jason, McKellar, and Cleveland. Are Jason sitting. and Jason. Yeah. On the other side. So we're, we're really excited to have you today to talk about well, bullets. browning yeah, and calibers man. and bullets and all that kind of stuff. Well, good, 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 good. Rafe Nielsen, how you, you've been with Browning quite a while, haven't you? 
I uh, I have. I've been here uh, ooh, 17, 18 years, something like that now. Oh, wow. Man. Well, I'm just, I'm just, look, I'm going to be kind of giddy today because Browning's one of my favorite brands. I have loved it since I was knee high to a grasshopper. I've just yeah. always loved Browning. I just think y'all make the best stuff no matter what it is. And uh, so when Lanny and I got to go out there a few years ago and, yeah, that was pretty good, Bob. You arranged a meeting in order for us to go out there and look at the office, and it happened to be turkey season. And, and I really didn't know that. You didn't know I, that. I, I, I still did, don't believe you. I did not know that. <laughs> so our first introduction to Rafe was uh, we, we went turkey hunting. Yeah, we went turkey there. hunting in the morning. Yes, it was sir. great. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I, re- I remember that. that was a great hunt. Travis and I went, and you, were, you went up, and then we went down. Uh yeah. Well, and y'all, yeah, y'all, y'all, I don't know. Maybe y'all. Travis all I know, is, all I know is Travis and I walked out with a turkey on our back. Well, we saw a turkey. Uh, with a long beard on our back. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you what happened. It's never happened to me before, and it's never happened since. But this was with Rafe. We were on the side of this big mountain, and that afternoon we watched a bird fly up, and we knew right where he flew up and the next morning we got in there slithered like snakes up this mountain Mm -hmm. and laid down against a rock and through my binoculars i got to watch a bird wake up and i watched him pull his head out Mm -hmm. from under his wing from under his wing wake up shake his feathers yeah and he i mean in 60 seconds later he's got everything kind of primed and he gobbled and I got to watch all that. On wow. top of a mountain. It, it was beautiful. On top of a mountain. It was, so, and, you almost got a little choked up when you were it, saying it was, that. It was oh, well, really. He, I mean, he's, 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 he touched yeah, those birds it, it, now. Rafe was there. I, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll back me up on that. But we didn't kill them. No, it was, a, it was a good morning. That was a good morning. It was a great morning. In all fairness to us, and yes, I know that, that you killed the bird on the other <laughs> side, but we were given the bad piece of property. Let's be honest. <laughs> I, I would, you I, got to go with our CEO. I'm yeah. I'm just a, the marketing <laughs> hack. So I got the we got the uphill side. You guys got the downhill side where all the birds were at. And we... Uh, I agree a hundred percent. That's exactly what I always yeah. thought happened. Yeah, I chose well. I can't <laughs> help it. I'm a turkey hunter. <laughs> yeah, we call that gar holing. Yeah, yeah, but all I remember is, you know, I, of course I chose wisely, well. chose Travis, but I came out with a long beard. Well, I, I disagree because after what? that turkey, it had a it had a mustache. Oh, it didn't come have on, a beard. Man. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> You're uh, just jealous. No, it, so, did, it did not have a beard. Oh. It had a few strands, but it was. <laughs> I still got it. Was it a I'm Jake a or was it beard rot? It was. It wasn't a Jake. It's a full goblin, you know, full fan turkey. Do y'all's turkeys out there have thinner beards, Rafe? Um, you know, I think they do, and in a lot of respects, it, it's not like the big. Heavy uh, uh, paintbrushes that you guys get down there with those easterns. We 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 tend to have a little bit Stubby. thinner and stragglier and shorter bills a little bit. Yep, yep. We really do, unfortunately. Oh, stud. You guys not known as a as a great turkey state. Let's be honest. I didn't even know y'all had turkey. I Man, I was I, can't, I That's one of my favorite pictures I have. Me and Travis with snow capped mountains behind us with a long beard down. Yeah, it that's awesome. wild. That was a beautiful, <laughs> beautiful setting for sure. You can call it a mustache if you want to, but. I know what it was. <laughs> well, so look, let, let me let me try to get this back corralled and the reason why we're calling. So, Rafe, we wanted to talk to you today and kind of get your thoughts you, with you being a gun guy. Just are there any trends and calibers for and let's talk about for white tailed deer right now. And, and I, I guess the way I can yeah. position this question to you is if if you were invited to go on a white tail hunt in the let's just say you were going to go to Martin Jury's place, Missouri. Ooh. Mm-hmm. And you can walk into that great big, uh, With a rifle. great big safe out there, and uh, the scout Browning on it, and pick any <laughs> rifle you want to get. What what caliber would you pick up, and and why? Well, that's a man. The, the caliber question is a, is a terrible question to ask, right? Everybody <laughs> has their own opinion. It's, it's a brutal deal. Um, we just so, brutal, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that that's rough. To, to, to be honest, though, is, is as popular and trendy or whatever you want to call it, the, the six by Creedmoor is kind of fits in such a really good spot for um, you know that world, especially when you when you want to talk white tails and you want to talk in the south or even the Midwest, um, where you're you're shooting in um, 
uh, I don't want to say a controlled environment, that's, that's the wrong word, but a stationary environment and, and those kinds of things. I, it, it's really hard to beat that caliber. Um, it works, it's effective, it doesn't beat you up. And I think that's the main reason why it's been so popular is that you have a pretty effective caliber uh, that doesn't beat you up. And so if, if you're talking as a pure pure whitetail um, and, and not a whole lot else, um, I, that 6.5 Creedmoor is, is really – it's hard to beat. There's a reason why it's popular, and uh, and it'd be a hard one to hard one to beat. Yeah. Well, that is interesting because we had a couple guys in last week, uh, the Deer Meat for Dinner crew, Robert and Game Barrington, uh, and they were big six five Creedmoor guys. Uh, and it was interesting. Mm-hmm. It's interesting that you said that. Hmm. Wait, what is, did that thing? Yeah, it's, it's just really gotten popular. Yeah, in the last couple of years, yeah. I noticed it because you could buy shells, you know, at Walmart. It's like, well, this thing's getting popular. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, you, you say it's getting popular. It's it's beyond that at this point. It um, it's the number one selling caliber for us right now. Um, wow. I know it's the number one selling caliber or close to the number one selling caliber for the ammo guys. Come on, take so, me. So um, <laughs> it makes a, it makes up a huge portion of gun sales right now. Wow, that really surprises me because I it just imagine I just assumed that something like the two seventy or thirty out six would be. Yeah, I, I would have thought that. 30 out six, 270 or the, you know, my old trusty 308 I'm standing you know, by. <laughs> it's, it's funny, yep. uh, Rafe, you may uh, have heard some of this too, but it, it seems like people are making fun of the 270 a lot these days. Uh, you know, it's a yeah. classic round. I mean, Jack O'Connor used it. And uh, uh, I've never but, been a big 270. But you get guy. on social media mm-hmm. on some of these, you know, groups and, People talking about what they like, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, you lost your deer? I bet you shot it with a two <laughs> like, I know, I know, it's more fun, and we know a well placed bullet is going to put yeah, down the a white tail. But, but, um, it's the one that's trending yeah. to be picked on. It's, it's bullied right yeah. now. So, Rafe, what we we call you, and we're talking. Yeah, sorry, Rafe. <laughs> but, but what about? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> what about a, a style of rifle? Is there anything that's kind of trending right now that? that just steps out uh, the, the the X bolt, the a bolt, any of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Our, our big sellers right now, um, or, you know, obviously our, our X bolts, the biggest platform we have, it's really the, the workhorse and the flagship for us, but more specifically, uh, the, the higher end level guns are getting a lot more attention um, instead of, you know, with standard guns just being, you know, like a black composite stock or, uh, or a wood uh, stock gun don't have the same attention as, as when you step up in features. So when we get up into long range shooting platforms, those guns that we have with McMillan stocks and our carbon fiber stocks and the Cerakote uh, coatings on the barrels and receivers uh, are, are trending really, really well for us right now. Um, the more we add on to a, an X bolt, the better it sells. Uh, and, mm-hmm. and I think it's, it's really kind of being driven by that long range shooting, uh, long range hunting, and knowing that people, you know, the way this is trending out is that people are realizing they can do a lot more with their guns than they thought. Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not just grab a box of shells uh, from your thirty out six and throw them in and go shoot at a rock at a hundred yards and call it, call it good, and you can go hunt for the year. That's not uh, how well. That works <laughs> and worked for, for for decades, right? I mean, that's how my dad used to decide his guns. Um, <laughs> But they're they're realizing that these guns are are, are becoming instruments of, of precision. Yeah. And and they're willing to, to step up and find out, man, you know, what can my gun do and what can I do with my gun and, and so so we we're stepping up a lot of that kind of stuff when it gets into the precision shooting, really technical stuff. I think people are far more uh, informed. They're more interested in, in the science of long range shooting. It's making, you know, the, the information, the ammo. Uh, the optics, all of that is getting better and better and makes uh, entry into precision shooting a whole lot uh, easier. It's not as intimidating and, uh, and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, trigger pulls are up right now. Um, oh, yeah. And it, it's good. It's good for everybody. And, and so we're really excited to see things escalate that way because it's, 
it's uh, it's good for business. It gives people reason to buy a gun, and 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 they're they're buying higher end and and higher quality guns right now, and that's that's a good thing. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. You know, so when I went when I was going to college, I worked in a sporting goods store in Montgomery, Alabama, called the Outhouse, <laughs> and we were a huge Browning dealer. In fact, I won a contest. I won a safe, a Browning safe for selling so much Browning oh, merchandise. Man, but at that time, <laughs> if you looked at a Browning gun, it was shiny. The gold trigger, oh, yeah. the wood was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Everything was was just high polished. But but now, if you walk into Gary's across the street, it's the Cerakote finish or the or you know it's dipped in bottomland mm-hmm. and mossy oak pattern or some other pattern. I love the fact that people recognize that these guns are tools now. That's exactly and it, right. And it doesn't need to be a fine piece of wood polished. Well, it and, it, you know, you can get a custom gun from the factory now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, just. It's just totally different. Used to, you'd have to buy a rifle and and get, add all these parts and yeah, float the barrel, yeah, glass yeah, bed. Yeah. Now it's uh, stuff. it's just total precision right, right. out of the box. It, it's all there, and you know we've we've made it easy, and and people have gravitated to it, and that's the nice part. Like we've done our job, obviously on the the firearm side, the optics side, the ammo side. We've all elevated the game, but you know the credit really goes to. Again, consumers that are out there who are embracing it and and realizing it and having fun with it, and they're they're the ones pushing us to come up with new and exciting stuff. You know, we used to we could live for decades on on one spec of gun of you know yeah. a wood wood model A bolt and in two seventy or thirty out six right, and, and we went for years on that, and, and now they're they're pushing us for more and new and and makes our jobs a lot more exciting. That's for sure. Oh, I bet. Well, so on in, on a social media this week, I've noticed that y'all are doing like a virtual shot show. Um, it is so that that anybody consumers can can see what you guys have got uh, if they'll go to uh, at Browning Firearms. Is that what y'all's page is there, Rafe? Yeah, it is. Uh, so uh, the Facebook page is Ain't Browning Outdoors, and and our Instagram is Browning Firearms. So yeah, we are heavily involved right now in in a virtual shot show. We obviously shot show got canceled, and uh, so we're we're trying to uh, kind of hold our own virtual one. You know, shot show is a great opportunity for us to introduce brand new products uh, to the dealers. Um, obviously, shot is a uh, as a private show for for dealers only, but but we broadcast most of that stuff anyway to the public, so they see what's out there and can see what our offerings are for the year, and and go and call their dealer and say, hey, I saw that Browning came out with this new X bolt. Um, I'd like to put one on order. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's a great opportunity for us to to both speak to both dealers and retail or uh, um, the consumers directly about what we can do. And so there's a lot of feedback and a lot of back and forth between consumers and dealers and us and, and uh, kind of creating a, a really cool demand for, for new products um, at shot. And, you know, it's, it's different. We're not there in Vegas uh, in the, in the mess of a, a huge trade show. We're trying to do it here in our offices via social media and websites. And it's definitely a challenge, but, but we're cranking out a lot of really cool new products and we love shot show products because we get to do some different and new things that we can try out and see if, if they're liked or not liked. And so there's some, there's some really fun, fun products that are out there. Well, sure. So tell us, pick out a couple and just tell us what you got that's new, that's exciting to you. Yeah. So, um, really the, the headliner this year is our new Maxis two. And uh, so we've had the original Maxis gun in the line for about, oh, I don't know, 12 years or so now, I think is where we're at. And uh, and so it's time just to upgrade the Maxis. So we've made some big changes on, on the Maxis, turned it into the Maxis 2. And, uh, you know, you take a look at it on the website and, and our social media. It's, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of cool features on it. We've made it a lot more adjustable. We can trim the stock, keep the same uh, recoil pad, a much softer recoil pad now a soft cheek piece that's on there that's going to soften that blow into your face. So it's really made it a lot easier to shoot. It's going to be a softer gun to shoot um, off your shoulder and off your face. Uh, Cool new loading ramp. It's going to be easier to load. Uh, Enhanced features uh, in terms of uh, operating handles and larger bolt release buttons. Larger trigger guards, so you can get your glove finger into it. <laughs> Who knew um, you could do we, so much? Yeah, it sounds yeah, perfect. For a duck. Yeah, I know there's there's a lot there's a lot to be done, and then and then we've changed the old latch system on the fore end to a more traditional mag cap 
that uh, more, more people are familiar with. So mm-hmm. there's a lot that we've changed on that gun. Um, we kept the same operating system, uh, so the reliability will stay the same that we, we know and love and change a lot up on that gun. So you can go and take a look at it, and uh, there, there's some really cool models. We did it in, uh, um, obviously, the, the shadow grass pattern. Uh, we did it in the original the original bottom land and the new bottom land oh, pattern. Wow. Uh, break up so country. Really cool. I don't even have to look at it. I'll take there, one. There is a break up country <laughs> for, yep, for a turkey gun. So, yeah, there's quite a bit of op- options out there. And, uh, yeah, so we're really excited to kind of expand the line here at the SHOT Show offering. Wow. Well, good. That's exciting. That really is. Y'all got, y'all always have a lot going on. That's, and everything that got, you're right. Booth. Everything that got so cool. It, it, really, it really is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And, and of course, we're thinking about duck hunting since Shot Show's not off, and they're thinking about innovation. <laughs> so I, I bet yeah. you Rafe's thinking about duck hunting. Yeah. Duck. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, I recently, uh, of course, I'm always on social media. I'm an addict, but uh, there's a really popular whitetail Facebook group, and somebody posed a question. Uh, it's, you know, survey type thing. Yeah. And uh, the the long range Browning rifles, you know, the question was, what's, you know, what's, what do you think is currently the best factory rifle to get? Hands um, down. And there was like seven different manufacturers and uh, the long range offerings from Brownings were at the top of the list. Oh, wow. That, that, yep. By That's far the most votes. <laughs> Well, right. Yeah, and there, there's a reason for that. And, you know, we're, we we focused on it, and we build products that have uh, have those attributes. So there's there's a reason why why they they come to the top of the list for everybody. Mm. No doubt about it. Yeah, the best there is. Mine's got a lot of notches on it. I know yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be remiss if I don't mention is, is this broadcast will be able to, to launch here tomorrow, so this will be live by then. But there's a new caliber coming out. Uh, mm. that's going to rival that Creedmoor. Um, and so Do we're, tell. we're pretty excited about the, <laughs> yeah, yeah the, the new, the new caliber of, uh, it's the, the 6.8 Western. Ah. And, uh, we're pretty excited about this new, this new caliber that's out there, a cartridge, I should say. Interesting. It's going to the rival that. It's, it's a little bit bigger than the, than the 6.5, obviously. Uh, it's going to be still in a, in a short action platform. Um, so it's the 270 bullets. We talked about the 270 and, and the, the black eye it gets. Primarily, you get that that black eye just from the standpoint it's just older and it's not updated with technology. You're only shooting 140, 150 grain bullets um, in a slow twist, twist rate rifle, and uh, and this is going to allow us to to take that same bullet, that 277 bullet, but we're going to be able to elongate it, make it heavier. We're going to shoot 175 grain bullets out of it, uh, jump that twist rate up to one and seven and a half instead of one ten. And uh, we've created a, a cartridge. Yeah, we've created a cartridge that's really more of an ultimate cartridge that is plenty for elk and not too much for whitetail. And that's kind of where the where the gap has been in cartridge development is you have these 6.5 Creedmoors, and they're great for whitetails, as we talked about, but they're just not quite up to snuff for, for an elk caliber if, if you get into a questionable situation. <laughs> um, or you got to jump all the way up to the big magnums, and that's too much for whitetail. And right. so we found kind of this happy Ooh. medium that uh, that you can shoot a short action gun, um, that uh, you can shoot for whitetail, mule deer, elk, and, and it's really going to be a, a do-all caliber for us. So, uh, Rafe, let me ask you this. Is, so is this caliber, is will it be exclusive to Browning? Well, right now it is. So this was a joint um, collaboration that we did with Winchester and, and Winchester Ammo over there. Uh, we kind of got together and kind of said, what do we need to do? What what does the in- industry need? And so we, we launched this together. So Winchester Ammo and Browning Ammo will have uh, specs um, in it, and then we'll be making firearms in the X-Bolt and then in Winchester um, the XPR and the um, and the Model 70. So we'll, we'll have guns available here shortly. Um, and all three of those those platforms. Well, Bobby, uh, you know what to get me for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I love that name, you know, from a marketing standpoint. Yeah, it's it's awesome. simple, but awesome. Yeah. You know, six, eight, Western. Western. Yep. Yep. It's I mean, gonna be, it's going to be a fun one. And hopefully there's a bunch of information being kicked out here uh, this, this coming week. And, and people can learn a whole lot more about it. Wow. Go. Cool. So, uh, so, so, guys, listen. If you, if you go to Instagram mm-hmm. and at at Browning Firearms, you mm-hmm. can see all this stuff. And then uh, yep, Browning all there and, and all. In, 
Yep, and then Browning.com will have all the specs, and all the information, all the photos, and the whole the whole gamut. So, yeah, I'd, I'd jump onto our website and see it all. Great. That sounds perfect. Well, I, I, I'm glad we're not actually having to be together out in Las Vegas. We're enjoying being in Mississippi, and I'm sure you're enjoying being home in Utah there. But hopefully, hopefully we can share a campfire one day soon. There you go. I, I'd rather do a campfire than, than a Vegas show, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we had to. Uh, well, Rafe, we appreciate you being on, and we really appreciate Browning and what you guys do. And, and been longtime uh, friends of ours. It, it really has been. We certainly you appreciate bet. it. Happy to do it. Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thanks, it. Ray. Thank you, Ray. Ray. Thank you, Ray. All right. I, don't, I wouldn't mind an in and out burger right now, but yeah. I've had one of those. Yeah, they're delicious. They are delicious. So, all right. So, so that, that was, was awesome. Yeah, really was. Six, I'm four, fired nine. up. And then this 6-5 Creedmoor keeps coming up. Here we go. You know, yeah, it, is. it was the talk last. I've actually got a box of bullets there on the desk. Bullets? Of, of cottages. As my dad would call it, cottages, 6.5 cream, more cottages uh, on the desk. So that's interesting. Yeah. I, right. love, I love rifles. I do, too. I, do I too. really, truly yeah. do. So, look, why don't we – does anybody else have anything to say about that, or we'll take a break and we'll get I'm Pat out. Mundy from Nosler. Ooh, okay. more bullet talk. Yeah, yeah. So why don't we – anybody need to run the restroom? You can. Guys, give us a break. Let's play a commercial, and we'll pay some bills, and we'll get Pat right Mundy on the phone. <laughs> Folks, it's Jeff Foxworthy. You know, when I was a kid, my dad bought back the farm that he had grown up on, and I absolutely loved that place. I knew every square inch of it. It truly was my favorite place on earth. And when you're looking to find a favorite place for you and your family, Mossy Oak Properties can help. Visit MossyOakProperties.com in your search today. Hello. Hey, Pat. This is Bobby Cole and Lanny Wallace. And hey, we got, Pat. We got Dudley over here with us as well. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How are you guys? Well, good. Well, we're uh, we're doing this podcast about calibers and uh, and e- and even bullet trends. And we just got off the phone with Ray from Browning and had a really good conversation with him. And so I told Lanny and Dudley, I said, "Look, I'm a, we're gonna get Pat Mundy from Nosler. He is the president of Nosler." And I've recently met him at a couple of shot shows and had a dinner with him. He's a really interesting guy, and we'll get his insight on caliber trends. So that's what we want to do. All right. Well, I should be up front, guys. I'm not the president of Nosler. I'm the vice president of sales and marketing at Nosler. Oh, well, who's the president? president? That would be John Nosler. Ah, oh goodness! How did in the sense. world did I do this? Well, is, is he available? Could we could we talk to him, perhaps? <laughs> oh man! Well, I, I guess you'll have to do today. We'll when we we'll make do here, but absolutely. So Whoop. I would expect that you're on the pulse of what's going on with with new calibers and what what's hot out there in terms of. Uh, calibers for white-tailed deer but what so what do you what are you hearing what are y'all seeing well i think you know there the, the focus that we see continues to be a lot of um emphasis on longer range shooting and um higher performance projectiles better accuracy um really good terminal performance all the kind of things that you know nozzler's kind of built its reputation on the last 72 years and uh so we're you know, we're just doing our best to keep building products that people like and, and coming out with new products and, and um, producing stuff that the, the guys are using in the field, or at least that they want. So what is there a caliber that you think is hotter than something else? Well, in addition to our own 28 nozzler, we're really seeing, you know, a lot of emphasis on like the 6.5 PRC and the 6.5 Creedmoor and um, a lot of those higher performance uh, longer range rounds that, you know, shoot longer, sleeker bullets. Well, that 6.5 just needs to be hot because Rafe talked about it. The guys from Deer Meat for Dinner were here last week, and they just went on and on about it. Man, it's a – and I've actually got some of these, these cases. Here's an intriguing-looking bullet. I, You know, we were talking earlier uh, about our favorite rounds, and, and I guess all of us are dinosaurs, Bobby, because, yeah. you know, I'm shooting old 308, <laughs> and by, and Dudley's all there on the 30-06, and you're on the 243. Uh, but it is it is 
Yeah, boy, there's a lot of lot of buzz going on around these new rounds. I tell you, yeah, there is, and, and it, a lot of consumer acceptance. It seems like, and we may be yeah. late to the party on this because I think that six point five Creedmoor. Is, yeah, it doesn't surprise us that we're late to the party. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, but people people still shoot the two seventy and the twenty five alt six and those traditional rounds, don't they? Oh yeah, they're still very popular as well, and they do a great job. You know, they're classic deer calibers and. And honestly, I think they work for most hunting as well as anything. I mean, they're terrific. You know, the 270s, you know, Jack O'Connor's baby. It's uh, yeah. it's always going to have a place in the American whitetail market. Mm. Classics like you, Bobby. Classics. Hey, talk about classics, too. <laughs> Nosler. I mean, I, I, it's the, one of the most iconic hunting brands there. I mean, this is probably one of the first brands I got exposed to. So, I'm just super excited to be able to talk to you today, Pat. You know, even growing up, going to, you know, my dad was a rifleman, so... Uh, that Nosler Partition Bullet, man, that thing was, I think that's the two brands that I was most early exposed to was Ruger and Nosler, actually. Yeah, look, it's a classic it outdoor a classic brand. brand. It's it been really around is. a long time, and, and it, it stands for quality. And when you think about a Nosler Bullet, it, 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 nothing but quality comes to mind. What does you know? And I, I the the I guess the the most marquee one in my mind. And I know there's obviously since I'm still on the 308 train, that there's probably a lot more <laughs> <laughs> more technology out there uh, than what has been. But like, what is the uh, you know the science behind the partition? Is that a bonded? Just so you know, maybe some of the our listeners would understand a little bit more about the science or the technology behind some of that stuff. Oh sure. Well, that that's the bullet that the company really started with and what it is it's a two cord bullet so there's a front core in the bullet and then there's a partition of jacket material and then there's another core in the back so it's not bonded but the idea is that no matter what it hits it will shed that front core it'll cause a shock a mm -hmm. lot of damage and then that rear core will keep driving through so you get a lot of penetration and you know the reason that bullet was was kind of revolutionary at the time is it gave you the best of both worlds most bullets at that time were, you know, just a standard cup and core bullet. So if they hit something hard, they tended to come apart, like a mm -hmm. big shoulder bone on an animal or something. The partition would hit it hard and then keep driving through into the vitals and, and provide cleaner kills. So, you know, that bullet's been around, obviously, since 1948, but it's, uh, it's continued to be improved, and we've added to the line, and they're better than ever today. So it's still one of our most popular projectiles. I can remember the cross section of you know in the in the ads yeah. you know, showing it and all that yes. stuff. So what will be the difference? Sure, in that? It looks like an H. Yeah, it looks like an H. What is a what's the difference between that and a bonded bullet? Well, the bonded bullets, the core is is actually bonded to the jacket material. So the copper portion and the lead are fused, and that makes it so that the bullet um, it, it tends to peel back more. Mm -hmm. And so you can control the expansion with the thickness of the jacket. And so you can get a lot of the same effects that typically a bonded bullet um, penetrates maybe a little bit less. But the nice thing about our AccuBond and AccuBond long range is they're tremendously accurate bullets. So they give you a lot of that, um, you know, match grade accuracy mm -hmm. and then really good on game performance. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. That partition bullet is like two in one. It really is. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, it is. Yeah, that's a good point. So, Dudley, I know you've got a question for Mr. Pat. Um, yeah, I thought you had a good There's question. always an argument. Uh, I'm, I, I was telling Rafe, I'm kind of a social media junkie, and I'll get on these Facebook groups and read everybody arguing and discussing what works better in what instance. Um, and, and one of the ones I always see is, you know, the ballistic tip versus Acubond. And, uh, for whitetails mm -hmm. and, uh, I know they're both great bullets. Um, but, uh, I guess that I want to know if, if you were going to choose between the two, um, what caliber, uh, let's just say, uh, in the six, five, what, uh, you know, I, I, I understand the ballistic tip, you know, may expand more rapidly and, and not possibly go through every pass through every time. But all of that energy is expended inside. Um, I know they're both popular, but uh, wh which one's more popular for Whitetail? Oh, man, 
That's like asking somebody to choose between their kids. I think, um, (laughs) honestly, I like them all. I mean, they're all good for different purposes. And usually what I do is I'm a hand loader. So I try to find the ones that shoot the best in my rifle. And then I just go with that. And uh, honestly, I have never had a big, I've never seen a huge difference, I guess, on game. You know, it's, they both do a really, really good job, as does the ballistic tip, which is which is kind of our one of our flagship deer bullets as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you know, one of the things that people need to I, I would expect that everybody listening to this knows, but you, no matter what brand of ammo you buy, you you know you may have a favorite. You may prefer Federal or Browning or Remington or whatever. But there's there are there not all bullets are created equal. But in most of those brands I just mentioned and more, you can find a Nosler bullet if you look for it. And I think it's worth all the time and trouble that it may take. Yeah, especially if they're hunting, no doubt about it. So, Pat, let me ask you. uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was thinking about my next question. He runs all over me too, Pat. (laughs) No, it's all right. Go ahead. (laughs) (laughs) Look, we can ask the questions and answer them. Yeah, all you need right here. (laughs) So – so all my since I've started hunting and I've been hunting a long time, so this goes back a long, long I've, I've, time. I've had a I've had this kind of a thing about me, but when I I've always shot a bolt action rifle, and the the rounds that I would put down in the magazine after I would fire my rifle, I've noticed that the tips would be blunted. And so the next time I would go to load that rifle, I, w- I wouldn't want to shoot those rounds. I would push those, continue to push those down in the magazine as number two or number three and try to shoot a fresh tipped partition as the, as the number one round. But so my question to you, what I'm trying to get to is my anxiety about shooting one of those blunted tips. Is it, is it, Found it. is it a real anxiety? I mean, is it worth being anxious about? Well, I think it's a, it sounds like it's a real anxiety, <laughs> but it's, I don't think it's worth being anxious about. I think for hunting, um, for hunting effects and accuracy, I don't think it's going to make a lot of difference. The nice thing about some of the new plastic tip bullets is that that, um, that's why one of the benefits of the tip is it does prevent that, that tip deformation. So, um, you know, it's something to consider if you're seeing that all the time and it does bug you or it, it ruins your confidence a little bit, then, you know, maybe consider something like a ballistic tip or a partition. But I honestly think for practical accuracy, the, the difference is going to be negligible. I think you'll be fine on deer side target every time. Well, good, because all my bullets like looked like that. <laughs> I guess maybe because I'm rolling around in the truck bed yeah. or something. Have you ever noticed that, Pat? <laughs> Oh, yes, wow. I have. I've the same thing. Apparently, Bobby's way more worried about his ammunition yeah, than I am. I really think about <laughs> it. So, but look, I, I, and look, we'll let you go after this, Pat. I know you're busy, but I, I wanted to say it because several years ago I found this and I, I bought a. Y'all have something called Nosler Custom Ammo, and I guess there's somebody there that's reloading this, hand-loading this ammunition. And and so I've got a box of 25 alt 6 I think it's a 117-grain partition, and they're just fantastic. They, they group so well. Wow. And I would encourage our listeners, if you want some good ammunition, that's a, that's a great thing. I had no idea they had a custom-loaded shop. Yeah, we do. That's, yeah, it's definitely the custom of ammunitions available, the trophy grade, um, and then the ballistic tip ammunition is very common too and popular. So, yeah, we have several ammunition lines, and and it's getting uh, more and more available all the time. So, you should be able to find it at most your local stores and in your area. We hope. Well, uh, Pat, before we let you go, where can guys learn more about Nosler? I know y'all have a website. That's the best place. It's just www.nosler.com, and that's N-O-S-L-E-R. Well, that's good. Well, look, we have uh, – I, I think we've, uh, Man, we've learned yeah. something today for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. And next time we'll get I'm going to have to upgrade my calibers. That's what I'm not – but it's, you know, you always need another excuse to buy a gun and some bullets. Hey. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, that's you right. do. You do. We're going to get John Nosler on here, Yeah, too. we're going to get him one day. <laughs> <laughs> well, Pat, look, we enjoyed having you on there. I hope Absolutely. you have a, have a good rest of the day. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Pat. We'll see you. See you, buddy.
Bye. All right, we'll see. So, yeah. So, you know, we've had two two interesting guests. Of, of and they keep bringing up the six five Creedmoor. Is it, it's so dark and in here? I can't see. Is that that's what that exactly is? what that is? The deer meat for dinner guys and Blue Gabe. That's what they were shooting. So it, they had actually left a box here. And that's the that's the ballistic tip bullet, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. That's the six five Creedmoor. It kind of looks like a two forty three casing. It does. Well, it, it uh, this might be your new round, Bobby. Is it not based off a 308 case that's necked down to six and a half? Well, I think in a 243 and a 308 case, pretty close anyway. It's the same thing. Yeah. So it's probably just that same casing, just a different. That is a big bullet sitting in a small case. And it's oblong, you know. It looks top heavy. Yeah. You know, I've, I have, through the years, I've kind of kept like up we're doing with shots. The, <laughs> <laughs> I have another one. I, I've, I've heard people, <laughs> I've heard just as many people have horror stories with it. With what, the 6.5? Yeah. I've, I've, I've heard people have, with horror stories, but I've heard that with every caliber. Mm. You know, not picking yeah. on 6.5s, but right. I have heard that some And to Dudley's stories. point, if you shoot them in the right spot. Yeah, but, you know, people always want to blame their mistakes on something besides themselves. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> uh, I know I do. <laughs> a, I, blame, yeah. I blame mine on Lanny. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. me. Well, well, look, cool. let's keep this moving along. Yeah. I know we, Lanny wants to get out of here and go deer hunting and take Hayden this afternoon. Well, he's got the itch. Yeah, we, so we he, need to do that. So what, the last thing that's left to do is for us to do a Ask Dudley. Okay. Let's, let's do that real quick. Once in a generation, a mind comes along, a mind that understands more than the average person. And now he gives you the chance to ask the burning questions in your mind. It's time for Ask Dudley. What is the best way to a Apply ag lime to a small remote food plot. Good question, Bruce. And and that's the one we've gotten that one a lot, you know, uh, over the years. But it's it's probably one of the most important questions we get. So uh, I like to revisit that kind of stuff from time to time. Uh, getting lime on your food plots is is very important uh, if you need it. We're here in the prairie, uh, which. Eons ago used to used to be a barrier island, so there's a lot of calcium in the soil, and and thankfully we don't really need it around here. But uh, places like where you are, and and places where my my family farm is, uh, it needs it badly. Uh, and uh, most places uh, you can get away with, you know, putting about a ton an acre a year on. Uh, but we really recommend getting a soil test at least every three years to know exactly what you've got to work with. And uh, there's there's different uh, chemical and physical traits of soil. So one place, you know, you might have a 5.5 five pH and you need to put out two tons per acre. You could go 10 miles away to a 5.5 5 pH and it only requires half of the amount of lime. Uh, and so there's a lot of variables, but... Uh, a lot of folks like you have food plots that are hard to get to. The roads are narrow. Uh, you know, it may only be a trail. So uh, still the best way to do it is to put out pelletized lime. Um, and uh, it's just, it's more expensive per bag. So, you know, bulk ag lime that, that can be delivered to your farm or even spread, it may only be, you know, $30 a ton spread or $50 a ton where Pellet lime is, is usually at least $5 for a 50-pound bag. And, you know, knowing that you may have to put out two tons, um, it's going to be more expensive. Um, and that's not always uh, in everybody's budget. Uh, what I do um, is one bag for every bag of fertilizer I put out. Uh, oftentimes you'll have uh, the, the nitrogen, especially urea and ammonia, can raise the pH in your soil when it reacts with your soil. So by putting a bag of lime out every time you put a bag of fertilizer out, um, that's a good way of, of kind of neutralizing uh, that acidifying effect. So, yeah, it's still pellet lime. There's not really any other good options out there yet. Um, I'm, I'm reading some... 
some some good things about some new products that that are going to be coming out soon that uh, yeah, we've we, actually been testing some stuff we, we have uh, and, you know in our 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 uh, ph fertilizer also works in this scenario that's why we created it for the guy who can't get a lime truck in there so it's fertilizer with pelletized lime and yeah it just spikes the ph temporarily for a few months sure and sometimes that may be all you need so good question bruce Age old problem. How yeah. do you get it to the remote spots? Yeah. You know? and, and, and at least he's wanting to do that because that's the right thing to do and figure out how to get that done. So mm-hmm. I tell you what, it, it's amazing when you get it all right, the formula right, you know, the right, the right uh, pH, the right fertilizer, the right seed, the right ratio, everything is amazing. And soil testing is so inexpensive, guys. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, any it's cheaper than a bag of fertilizer. Right. Yeah. Right. Eight bucks at any land grant university in your state, or you can go to our website. Yeah. And they're, they're, Just Google food plot soil test. You can get right there. That, going that that's way. right. Really easy to do. And you and you can understand what exactly your pH is. So. Mm-hmm. Well, oh. thanks for the question. And, uh, Bruce, we're going to send you a little uh, happy, happy pack. pack. Yeah. Happy pack. Okay, so before we let Lanny get out of here, well, let's let's hit real quick. What did what we learn today? The six five Creedmoor is hot. It is. That's what I've learned today. And you know, this shooting, I, uh, I, I, you know, it used to be. It's funny because when I started bow hunting, my dad was like, "I was like, Dad, it's how close." He said, "No, son, it's how far." You know, so it seems like the trend's going back to uh, long range. You know, super accurate shoot, especially out west. So, anyways, I guess I learned more about the six point five Creedmoor today. I, it surprised me that both of them brought it up like that. I, I was, I guess, I'm really in behind the times. Well, we're all three behind the times because yeah. they're like, yeah, the old three oh eight two seventy thirty out six two forty. Yeah, well, I, I love my twenty five out six. There's always ways to improve, you know, and they're they're proving it in the yeah, gun and ammo market for sure. Yeah. Right, the technology. It's just amazing to see. You know, when we were, it, it, what is gun technology? These obviously these apps and all this stuff you got at your fingertips, but each year they keep on making it better. Oh, yeah. How in does it keep on getting? Yeah, there better? are scopes that are Bluetooth and and you can type into your app how far right. it is and they, these mill dots. They, they, they talk to your range finder. Yeah, you know, it's crazy stuff. Yeah, archery is the same. They, yeah, you, you're like, same. how can they improve on the compound bow? Yeah, and they somehow manage to do it every year. And it's when crazy. that pendulum sight came out, I was like, how do you get any better than this? Yeah, that. <laughs> that was yeah. years ago. How does that work? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I had fun. I hope I uh, hope, uh, hope we didn't put our audience to sleep today. But uh, Rafe and and Pat were great guests. Mm-hmm. It was fun talking about bullets. Yeah, it was. What we'll to do it again? Because I don't think we really got kind of down in the weeds. Yeah, and we need to do a show. About teaching kids how to shoot. That's right. I, we, we ought to do that. We ought to make them note to do that because uh, the time to do that is in the off season. Yeah. Not the week before. Yeah. No, there's no doubt about that. Yeah, so, all right, guys. Well, Jason, keep us. Uh, I think he was, I think he was poking fun at me. Yeah, I was. Yeah. <laughs> I'm used to it. Yeah, Everybody yeah. else is too. <laughs> Jason, keep us posted on your son. Well, we're counting on him getting a, a, a doe this next week. Or a duck. Yeah. A deer. Yes. A I'll, deer. I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. It's going to happen. All it's right. going to happen. All right. But Landon, you got anything to say? I don't. All right. Well, Dudley, Good say goodbye. Goodbye, Dudley. Goodbye, Dudley. Get us out of here, please. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Game Keeper Podcast. And be sure to tune in again. Subscribe to Game Keeper Farming for Wildlife Magazine. And don't miss the Mossy Oak Tropical's Fistful of Dirt Podcast with my good buddy, Ronnie Buzz Strickland.